Hello and welcome to another Budget and Legit video. Now we're talking about scan tools today. I'm going to be doing a review on a scan tool and a giveaway, competition giveaway on another scan tool. And the competition details will be at the end of the video. But what we are talking about today are Foxwell scan tools. Now, this is the Foxwell uh, NT644 Pro. You'll see I've used this in a lot of my videos. This is the scan tool I will get first. When a car comes in, I'll quickly plug this in just because it's really quick and easy rather than striking up the bigger scan tools. This is the one I'd always go to first. The one, the one I'm going to give away is, it's brand new. It just looks a bit battered. Um, it's the Foxwell NT500. Now it's a VAG scanner. So it does Volkswagen, Audi, Say and Skodas. The reason I've got it is because when I brought, well I actually brought that one first and I made a mistake, I didn't mean to buy it. I wanted to buy this one because this one does everything. The other one just does Volkswagen or just does German stuff. Um, and I needed this one and I was supposed to send the other one back. Um, I completely forgot about it by the time I remembered about it, it they just would, well, I didn't, it was a long time so they just wasn't going to accept it back. Um, so we'll just quickly show you this. You get a little pouch. There it is. I'll show it in more detail at the end. So yeah, competition for that fella. What I like about these Foxwell scanners is the fact that you can, they, they cater to everybody. Even their most expensive one, if you do cars, even at the weekend, even their most expensive one isn't out of reach. It's one that you can afford. Um, this is kind of the mid-range one, I believe. And then you can get some really, really cheap ones that just pull codes and stuff like this. This does a lot more. This does, this, um, does service, um, reset service lights, OBD2. It also has factory scan data in here, DPF um regenerations and and data um tps sensors I'll, I'll go through it i can't go through it all because it's just too much it also has dtc uh lookup so if, if you've got an error code you can plug it in and it'll tell you what that code is live data and everything it really is good and what's really fantastic about these is the free updates free updates for life so once you've got one same with same with the one behind me you you just download their their software pull your memory card out, put your um, details from the scanner, like your serial number and stuff, and whatever updates, bang, put them on the SD card, done. Updates for life, for free, which is fantastic. Because as you know, some of the scanners, they're ridiculous price to update. Now I am trying to get my hands on their kind of big one, their tablet one, which is the GT80, which is up here. So if you would like to see that, it's all touchscreen and all that, leave the comments down below because the more people I can get to comment, um, hopefully I should be able to try and get that. So I need you to, to help with that on that. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna quickly run through um, this scan tool and then we'll do the competition at the end. So essentially with this one, all you get is you get the scan tool, you get the lead and you get a box, nice hard box and a couple of leads in there to plug it into your computer. Um, that really is simple as that. Is it, is it, uh, it is only an OBD, it is only an OBD2 scanner. Um, so depending on your car, it'll only do OBD, won't do the older ones. Um, it won't do the older ones, but there you go. Like I said, what I like about it is just the fact that you plug it in and bang, it switches on. So we're gonna, we've got a car behind me, happens to be a Ford Mondeo. There is a couple of problems with it. I'm going to plug it into that and I'll also try and plug it into another car I've got here just to give you an idea. Like I said, I'm not going to be able to go through absolutely everything because the video would just be too long. But it's one of them things once you've got it, you can play with. So let's get it in the old Mondeo behind us and see what it looks like turned on. Now I'll try and do this as best I can. The only reason I don't particularly use this, well you don't see me using it a lot in my videos, is just because it's kind of hard to film you know, with the screen and try and get everything in shot, it's just a bit awkward. The bigger screens, the easier they are to film. But I do use this an awful lot. And you'll see in a lot of my videos, I do actually get this out first. But it's like I said, it's just because the screen is quite difficult to film. So as you plug it in, these are the options you get. And um, you can actually set these two bars down here, you know, depending on which cars you maybe do regularly. As you can see, we just got the normal OBD2. So we'll just quickly go okay with that, just to show you. It will automatically find out 
which one it needs and goes into your engine. Now, as you can see, this is just our engine. So we've got no uh, engine lights on, well, no faults in our engine. And this is our live data, arrays, codes, freeze frame, onboard monitor testing. There's the DC lookups or the DTC lookups. Um, and you can see how quick it is. So it does DPF. Um, now, again, it's like every scan tool. It doesn't do absolutely everything, but it does do a lot. Um, so on, depending on your car, it can do a regen. It can tell you the soot levels. It can tell you if there's a problem with your actual DPF. And you can do some live, uh, live data on it as well. Then you've got our um, kind of manufacturer scan. Then we've got our scan. So this goes into a lot more detail. Then you've got the SA, um, SAS. No, that's not secret air service, by the way. <laughs> Then you've got the TPS, you've got battery, so on some cars you have to kind of like do a battery retest, oil light um, reset, and even the brake. So if you've got a problem um, with the, the push button brake or you need to wind back your caliper, this machine does it all, which for the price is absolutely fantastic. What I also really like about it, let's just go for the oil reset here. Now some cars, again we have to go to Manufacturer Pacific, um, some cars you need the computer to actually reset the service light some cars you need to press buttons inside the car um, and this will this will do both so let's just go down to did i miss it now we go mondale now is it, it's telling me between 2007 to 2012 Click OK. Now, this is actually telling you how to do it. This particular case, you don't need to press a button to reset the service light. You do it internally. And this, this will tell you very, very quickly. It's just, you know, little things like that can make your life just so much easier. So we'll just go out of this. It gives you an idea. So I'll just go back. And then obviously, like I said, if you've got the push button, you know, you can diagnose a problem if you've got with the button, with the module, or even wind back the pistons. This car doesn't have that, but you can see you've got the option. So if we go into kind of, you know, the manufacturer scan, you've got Asian, China, Euro, uh, Europe, and USA. This has got more um, options than my big scan tool in it. So we're in Europe, because this is a European car. So we go down to Ford. Hopefully you can see that without too much glare. I don't know. I seem to be getting in it more than maybe the... There we go. Bang, we're straight into it. So we just go start new season. No, it's not. Right, this is just doing everything for us, what, what we've got. Now, is it telling us that it's, um, it's a... Turbo diesel, common rail, two litre, blah, blah, blah. Is that correct? Yes. Is that correct? That's, yes. Now, what we can do is we can do an auto scan, which is handy. So it'll go through all the modules and it'll tell you if there's a problem or not. Or you can just do it, you can kind of do it manually. So if you just want to check one particular module rather than having to go through everything, you can. But what we're going to do on this case is just go auto scan. Now, this depends on the car. This can take a few minutes, just depend on how many modules and stuff like that. So I'm just going to let this run through it. Once it's actually done, it will uh, turn the camera back on and we'll continue. It's done the full test and it's gone through, see how many modules it's gone through. Uh, 11. And what it does is it tells you if the module is passed or also then tells you if you've got a problem in that module. So you can scroll down to whatever module is a fault for example we've got an abs fault here so we just go um enter it will then go into that we can le lead we can read live data from that module so here's all the live data we can read so for example um i might do a separate video on this there is a there is a few things wrong with this car nothing major um but let's say we had a problem with, say, an ABS sensor. Uh, what you can do is you can scroll down. Uh, let me just see where we're looking. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, so we go enter, left wheel. Yeah. Um, 
that's another wheel sensor there. That's right front. One more. There we go. And then press view data. This has all my ABS sensors up. So if we take it down the road for a drive and we notice, let's say, for example, the front left is not registering, well, then you know you've got a problem with that side of circuit. doesn't mean you've got a problem with your ABS sensor. It could be the wires. It could be a load of things. But at least it gives you an idea of where to go. Again, if you jack it up and spin the wheels by hand and you realize... You know, you can spin this one two mile an hour and this one two mile an hour, but one of them doesn't read. Again, you know where you can look at whether you've got, a, you know, an ABS ring pickup problem, ABS problem. You can you go into it in more detail, but at least the live data, you know, and you can also, um, which I should have done, so just go back into it there. You can also graph it. So as you can see, as they're driving up, so you can see if there's any dropouts or anything like that, you know, for the, for the price point of this, it's amazing what you can actually do. It really is a great piece of kit. You can read the codes. You can erase the codes. Um, you can also do a quick erase, which I wouldn't really advise because, you know, you, you need to see what the problem is. You can save the, the, the fault codes or you can just do a display so it'll tell you, you know, what's wrong with it rather than going into the module. So if we just go down to the powertrain... You know, we can just quickly press it and it'll just give us the error code. Now, we are doing a service on this. Um, we're going to, I might show these, I don't know. They're just, they're nothing major. Um, so, it's amazing just the, the amount of information that is in here. And like I said, for me to try and go through everything is going to be very, very difficult. Because uh, it would just take too long. There's just too much information in here. Um, and you can see that the, the vehicles that it does is just, it's, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I mean, that really is it in a nutshell. Um, live data, you know, freeze frame data, it's just, it, it has it all. It has a lot of oil reset um, stuff in it as well. You can actually go into here and you can set, you can set it up to how you actually want with the units, depending where you are on the planet, if you want different, you know, units of measurements and stuff like that. Um, you can also play back your data so if you if you've gone for a, a drive and you can't really see the screen you can record it you can then view the data on you know when you get back so you're not looking at this you're trying to drive um, it's just you know it's one of them things like I said Foxwell tend to or Foxwell they actually cater for everybody. You know, you can get some really, really cheap tools out there that just reads codes. You can then kind of go for something like this, which is more, I think, more the middle of their range. And then you can go for kind of the top range. If you only, if you only work on your own car and you've only got one car, then there's no point you're going for kind of the big one, obviously. Um, you know, if you work on a couple of cars, you can go for something like this. If you then, you know, maybe work you know, you're kind of doing it in the, week the weekends and part-time, or you're thinking of getting into it, and you want a slightly better machine, you know, you can go for kind of the, the, the tablet base, which is the one I want to try and get my hands on. Um, so they, 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 they cater for everybody and everyone's budget. Um, it's my first scanner that I use because it's quick, it's easy. Depending on the, the actual codes then, I will go to, you know, my bigger scanner with the oscilloscope in and then start testing sensors and stuff like that. Um, but this is for, again, you know, for what it is, you can't go wrong. Free updates as well, which is, which is unbelievable. There's not many manufacturers out there offering free updates and even, even on kind of the bigger, the, the, the bigger ones as well. Um, when I updated this last, the amount of extra features that came on was, was brilliant. When I first got this, it didn't have... The um, I don't think I, I didn't have the TPS and didn't have the DPF filter function on, and then that was just added, and there was no charge for it, and it was great. So you you essentially got the DPF for free. Um, but now, obviously, if you buy, I think the I think the the NT uh, the NT six four four. I think they're slightly different looking to this now, but you know they're they're, they're more or less the same. Um, the card is in here. Let's just pull out that. There's the, there's the memory card. Uh, just bang that into your card reader and your computer, press a button and it updates. <laughs> you know, you can't get any simpler. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just brilliant. Now, um, I had, um, I did when I originally, 
was updating this the first time because I, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I did have a few problems and I did get some really good tech, uh, tech, tech support. Now it was um, kind of live tech support, but they, they got back to me straight away and told me what to do and it was sorted. So again, can't really complain uh, for the price. It all comes down to you know the price at the end of the day for everybody. And for the price, this is based that for what you get, I, I can't really complain. So we're going to plug this into another car. We've got a, a Skoda we're going to plug it into and just kind of run through a few things again. Not going to go, I, I can't go into it all because it'll just take too long, believe me. It's the sort of thing um, that once you get something like this, what I suggest you do, especially on your own car, your friend's cars, your parents' cars, plug it in, read all the live data, what I did want to also show, which I will show, I want to show the live data on the engine of this Ford behind us. This gives you your fuel pressure uh, reading, your, your high pressure pump reading, you know, your map sensor, your um, airflow meter. It gives you everything. Um, and what I suggest you do when you get something like this, open up the data page and save everything. Don't work on a broken car. Get all your good data from a good car. So when you get a broken car in, you can quickly look at all your save data, either print it out, because you can print out on this once you plug it to a computer, or you, can, or you can write it down, so you know that your map reading, for example, was whatever it was, you know you've tested that in a good car, you know that's good. You know your high pressure reading, again, whatever it was, you know you've tested that in a good car, so it's bad. So if you get a car that's come in, and you have different readings, you can more or less go to go to that point very, very quickly rather than trying to guess. Because if you can't interpret the data, it's pointless. And the only way you can interpret the data is essentially do it yourself. You can watch all the videos in the world. You can read all the books in the world. It's hands-on experience you need. Once you start looking and getting used to looking at live data, your repairs will just be so much quicker and so much easier to actually diagnose. So I'm gonna plug this back in. We're gonna get the live data on the engine. Just to, I just wanna show you what it looks like. We'll also get your live data on the uh, Skoda as well. And then we'll do the competition at the end of it. And then that's it, sorted. Now, the other good thing is when I actually did this originally, when I went into the generic O2, or the generic um, OBD2 readings. It said the engine was fine, there was no error code. You go into the manufacturer side of things and it showed us an error code. So that's, this, this computer has both. It just doesn't have the generic, because sometimes the generic one can lead you wrong. And then to be fair, sometimes the manufacturer one can too. So it's handy to have both of them. What I'm gonna do on this one, I'm not gonna do a full scan, because there's no point. It's gonna go down to the power control module, which is essentially the engine. This is going to then just go into that specific module rather than going through them all. Now each module does have, depend on the module, you can see live data. Uh, it just depends on the module you're actually looking at. Just like I showed with the ABS side of things. So we just go to live data. Now this is what I suggest you do, especially if you're just starting off. Get as many different cars as you possibly can together and read as much live data as humanly possible. You wanna see it when the car is cold, you wanna see it when the car is hot, and you wanna see it on a snap throttle. Because once you get used to seeing that information regularly, honestly, you will your repair times will just come down no end because you're used to seeing what's good, bad, or indifferent. Now, I can customize this list. I don't, this, this is the whole list now, as you can see. Um, I can select all or I can customize it. But what I'm gonna do and what I suggest you do, especially if you're starting off, is just go to select all and go to view data. You want as much data as, as possible. Go down, write it, to write it down, write what's, what's good, bad, or indifferent. Well, it'll all be good because make sure the engine is running okay. So you know, if you actually take down anything like this, um, maybe if I, the, the air condition isn't particularly great on this, but the actual engine side of it is running very well. So if you look at any engine data on this, you will know, airflow meter, you will know if it's good, bad, you know, well, you'll know it's good. It's not bad, you will know it's good. Um, so when you come, if you happen to have another car, 
and the, 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 the readings are completely different and it's the same car, well then you'll know exactly where to look for. It's just a case of going through everything, looking at it, writing stuff down and doing everything you can. Like I said, I'm not going to go into each one of these because as you can see, there is just a hell of a lot um, to look at. You know, good things to look at are your EGR valves, um, your map sensor, your exhaust, um, your turbo pressure sensors and stuff like that. They're all your fuel pressure rail. That's another good one to look at, especially on a diesel. Now this is a diesel, so I'm talking about a diesel now. Um, you know, fuel pressure rails and stuff like that. You know, just intake temperatures because these are the things that can affect diesel cars from running. Um, there's just lots and lots and lots of information. Too much to go through on one video. Um, just kind of get it in your hands and start playing with it. Now, be careful what I just said there. You know what I mean. <laughs> so like I said, the best advice I can give you, especially if you're starting out, is, is do, do this. Actually physically do this. Touch it, press the buttons, go through the live data because it's all well and good looking at pictures or looking at videos but you can have one car, you can have 10 cars with the same error code and there's 10 different problems. So look at it, feel it, write the stuff down, get used to it. My battery's about to die. I'm gonna plug this into another car. Right, we have a 2011 Skoda Roomster. This is the diesel one. When I turn it on, as you can see, it is flashing up service. See if I can do all this one-handed. Let's go to our oil reset light. Now I'm not sure if this can do it by just the press of a button or do we have to um, do it manually? I'm looking through the camera lens trying to do this and to hold the camera it's a bit fiddly. Go there! So we'll go see if we're doing auto so it's seeing if it can actually do it. Small maintenance so we're just because it is just a small one. Enter and we'll do the yearly one which is this one 15,000 kilometers or 365 days boom done as quick as that so let's just turn the ignition off turn it back on again as you can see look at that no more service light that's how quick this is it's just brilliant and you can see when we go back the actual um, options we have um, even when we have the high the high mileage one we can do that but that wasn't on this case so what I'm gonna do is I'll just start this get into some live data and uh, yeah we'll just kind of see what it can do on the old roomster so it right so these are the options we have I've gone into um, the actual manufacturer's mode Pacific because uh, you just get more options. Uh, we've got quick scan, auto scan, and auto scan all, which obviously speaks for itself, so it'll do all the modules. Um, I've already done that with the other ones, we don't really need to go into it. We'll just go control, we'll go common, and we'll go engine. Now, there is no fault on this, but well, there's no engine light, it doesn't mean there's no faults. There we go, we can read the ECU information, but what I want, we'll just see if there's any codes there. I don't think there is. Oh, there is. Fuel pressure too low. I think that's when I was actually um, servicing it, when I was bleeding it, so we won't worry about that, because it is running perfect. Um, we'll just go down to live data. Now, as you can see, we've just got loads. So I'm just gonna go select all again because like I said, if you're going to do this, you know, especially starting off, you might as well um, just go view data. Look at my poor nail that I smashed. That was clever. I'm trying to hold this is difficult and film it. Right, again, I'm not going to go through all this because it's just going to take too long, but you can see the actual live data we have. What I do want to go down is to the high pressure pump just to see if it was me Hold on, let me just kind of do this and not look through the camera because of position. G 
just loads of um, information. Battery voltage, that's, a, that's always a good one to actually look at because that's an important one. When you've got uh, low battery voltage that can cause all sorts of problems. There's just so many, I should have just maybe have selected fuel pump. You can just see how many options we have on here. Don't know if that air is going to be annoying people so I'll turn off the fan. Uh, once I find what I'm looking for I'll turn the camera back on there's no point me showing you all this because it's just it's just too much information right I had a look through and there's just loads and loads and loads of data um, there's just too much um, it's mostly there somewhere I know there's not a problem with the fuel pressure because this starts too easy and runs um, but there's just just tons of it I would prefer if they if you pressed and hold that it actually scroll down but it doesn't rather than you kind of have to um, keep pressing it but you can just see I mean it did the service light for us no problem you know just even when I go into you know you can just see how much especially with uh, being a German car just how much you can actually go into it the bi-directional controls yes they're not particularly great doesn't really have any as such um but again it is kind of you know for the price it's like everything you know the more money you spend the more kind of functions you get um but for the price point again i know i keep saying it but the price point is the key the fact that the fact that it does have free updates um you know is huge as well so yeah that's really it i can't go into everything because it just take too long to kind of go through all the features it does and you know depending on the car it does different things to depending on the car gone to the dpf um button to see the functions it has for this particular car so we'll go special functions i'm not going to do anything just want to kind of see what it does so we have a few there regeneration adaptation inspection and stuff so that's what it does for this actual model again i'm not going to go into any of them because this doesn't need anything like that doing but it just gives you an idea of what it can actually do and there we go back to the home page again um so yeah that's the foxwell nt 644 pro so yeah that's it um like i said for the price point i think this is classed as their middle of the range i could be wrong but i think it is um, if you have only got your own car to work on and you do no one else's then no maybe not this is maybe too expensive for you go for kind of their cheaper range if you do do a few people's cars and you want a bit more live data then yes this you know i mean i use it this more or less every day so it will work for you um by direction controls no not great um where well, i'm sure that the model's going up and the the gt86 this one here the one that i want Foxwell, send it. Um, we'll do that. I keep getting interrupted. I don't know where I was. Um, so yeah, the the higher models, and I'm sure that the 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 GT86, the one I keep banging on about, I keep banging on about because I want it. I want to see what it can do. Um, I'm going to leave a link down below to where you can get this and a link to their website. I'll also link to their Facebook page. And what you can do is you can message them telling them to send me the GT86, 86, it's not a twin cam, uh, <laughs> to, to send me the GT80 so we can review it. So the more people we can get, message them and annoying them. You never know, we might get it. I mean, they can only say no. Um, so yeah, I mean, I do use this. Uh, it's great, quickly plug it in, pull up some code, depend on the code is, is where I go for the next one. Um, by direction controls it is lacking but like i said there's price points for everything free updates and i mean free updates that is the key free updates that is massive um so that's it we're going to get onto the the competition prize now and uh, yeah sorted now the story was that with this is i bought this oh i don't know maybe three years ago maybe a bit more um and i made a mistake when i brought it i wanted kind of the the, the other one i got the one that does everything because this just does um 
VWs, Audi, Skodas, Skodas, Skoda, and say it. Um, it doesn't do everything. So this is just essentially the VAG scan. Scan? Scan. Uh, scanner. Um, and to be fair, they did say to me, send it back, we'll, re, you know, we'll give you your money back, because I brought that one, and um, it'll be fine. And then I said, yeah, I'll send it back to you. Then just things happen. I forgot all that sort of stuff. The time I realized, I just thought it was just gonna be too, it's, they're not gonna accept it back because it's been too long. And I've had it ever since. And I thought, well, I don't use it. I've never used it because the, the, the other one does all this. So we'll give it away as a competition. Um, it's brand new. What you've got in there is the, the OBD2 connector, the connector for the computer. Also, you have the destructions in the box. And then we have the actual scan tool here. A little bit different looking to the other one, or is it? It is a little bit different. Um, screen's a bit smaller. But essentially, this will do everything on, well, them ones I showed you. Uh, you just go online, there's a um, serial number at the back, there's um, also a thing in the settings which you need, and then you download their software and you can update it. The card's in the same space again. And yeah, so that I'm gonna be giving that away. Um, what I'm gonna do, because Thomas had a great idea, he had a scanner come in and um, he's gonna use it and obviously do a video on it, but then he's gonna, um, at the end of the month, he's going to do a competition for his Patreon users. So I'm gonna do the same. Um, I'm close to 10,000 subscribers and I wanna kind of make like a big deal out of it because I thank you ever so much for 10,000 subscribers. Absolutely fantastic. But everyone, well, I don't know everyone, but a lot of people kind of do 10,000. So we're not, we're gonna do 11,000 just because, you know, why not? So when I hit 11,000 subscribers, um, we'll do a competition for my Patreon um, people, whatever you call them, I'm not sure. Um, because obviously, I mean, I thank everybody, but I do appreciate everyone watching, leaving comments and stuff. But obviously the Patreons, um, you know, th they, they give me a few quid to kind of keep everything up and going. So this is kind of for them. So, um, yeah, so when I reach 11,000 subscribers, I'll, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll have to see what, who my patrons are and then kind of, I don't know, put uh, names into a hat or something. We'll, we'll see anyway. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll raffle this off and whoever gets it you know you can use it so yeah that's that's what we're going to do it's simple as that now like i did say this is the nt 500 so just bear in mind this is it's not the one i showed you it is the um you see it there the the volkswagen audi say it and skoda one um so if you want to check it out what it does if you just put foxwell nt 500 I'm sure you'll find all the specs that this thing can do. And there you go, you get a nice little pouch and everything with it, all, well, there you go, sorted. So that's it, that's the uh, NT644 Pro, and that's the NT500, and hopefully we'll get the GT80, which is gonna be up here. Uh, well, you know, we'll see. Um, it looks good from what I can see, but I've never used one, so I don't know. But we'll see. So yeah, I'll leave all the links down below to links where you can buy these machines, links to their Facebook, so you can message them telling them to send me the GT80. Um, <laughs> you might as well ask, haven't you? And uh, yeah, so look, hope helps, thumbs up, subscribe and all that, links down below, links up here, but most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.